Man, sometimes I just get tired of tinkering and I just want to play my games. If you feel the same, continue watching. We're back. <laughs> What's up, gamers? This is Too Loud Tech, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to talk about time. I don't have that much of it. And I don't always want to spend the time that I have tinkering and fiddling around with settings, messing around with frame skips, and just trying to get all these things right on the fly. Sometimes I just want to pull it out and jump right in. <laughs> with that being said let's get right into this this is going to be a two-part series the first part is going to be for those who want to just get back onto a stock os and the second part will be for those who want to get onto a modified stock os i will have links to everything in the description but first i want to go over some custom firmware options that are available starting with Botosira and Bodicera Karaoke Lite. So for those of you who followed my Bodicera Karaoke Lite guide, I would like to apologize because I know there was a few bugs in that and I should have tested it a bit more thoroughly. Some of the issues that users were reporting were problems with NDS and not being able to configure your keybinds. And even if you were able to configure them, they would not stick or save also the fact that the drastic menu is so small that you need a telescope to read it that was a major inconvenience for me and again i apologize other issues were some users were having problems with ps1 bios and not allowing them to actually load or just the ps1 emulator not showing up and having to do a bunch of tinkering in order to get that to work so I do not recommend Bottle Sierra Lite at this time. And I will make a note in my Bottle Sierra guide as a pinned comment. As for what I'm running right now on this SD card, this is Bottle Sierra V40, which I also don't recommend unless you don't mind tinkering because it still has some issues. Like in their GitHub, it states that the simple menu is broken in this release. There's problems with the Wi-Fi and the types of passwords that you're using with WPA3 settings and having to switch to WPA2. And I know some users are not comfortable messing around with their security settings on their routers. So I understand. Also, Dreamcast performance, you have to make sure to set some specific settings to use the standalone emulator correctly. I don't like that it's a consolidated image for the plus and the h i mean it is cool to be able to just swap the sd between the both of them but at the same time i don't like the workarounds that they made for the nds on the plus having to also be used on the h because we do have joysticks so i don't care for that also they also state that in this version the bootloader was updated and because of that you can no longer update from previous versions which is a bummer for some Another experience that I had, which I forgot to mention at first, was that I was getting battery drain on my device even when it was powered down. I didn't have it in standby mode. I had it fully shut down and I was still experiencing full battery drain on the return to my device. Even if I charged it to 100% the night before, it would be fully dead. I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to deal with unnecessary battery drain. So I just decided to opt out of about a zero for now i gave karaoke a chance but it was not for me i will say that bodicera is going to probably be my favorite custom firmware for these devices once everything gets ironed out and fully polished because i like bodicera for pc it's a nice operating system it is a very mature operating system it's been around for many many years and 
I like what they've done with it. I like the themes. I like the customizations. I like that I could scrape the box art right from the device, game manuals, game ratings. I like that retro achievements are built in. I just really enjoy the operating system. So at some point I will return to it. But for now, I'll just be using stock OS for my personal time. I do have multiple SD cards loaded up with custom firmwares so that I could test them out. But in my personal use, I will be using stock or a modified version of stock. It just works better for me at this time. But like I said, to each his own. And if you prefer something else, go ahead and try out one of these other firmwares. The next one that I'm going to talk about is MuOS. And getting into MuOS, I just wanted to share while I load this SD card into the device. It's just how fast this operating system boots. That's one thing that is very nice about MuOS is that it's a very snappy operating system. It's very lightweight. And it's good for those who like minimalist setups. To me, when I load into this home screen, I feel like it looks like a giant file explorer, but that's okay for some. I don't really care for the themes and how little they do to the aesthetic of the device. But like I said, it's super quick, it's snappy. And if it's your jam, do it. I don't, I don't um, speak for everybody. I only speak for myself and um, I think that this developer is very active. I will share a link to his discord in the description below so that if you want to join and be an active part of that community, you can do that. Also, they have an area there for you to share any bug reports. And he looks over all of this stuff, y'all. It is extremely quick and light. So if you want to join into that community and give MuOS a shot. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to Ann Burnick's stock OS. And if you notice, the boot time on this is nowhere near as fast as MuOS. And for some people, the boot time on the device really matters. I'm not one of those, but I can understand how just having a device boot up quickly into the OS can be attractive. I mean, for sure, I don't like a two minute boot up time or two and a half minute boot up time, which is what some people were experiencing with the bottle Sierra light. I didn't have that experience, but that can definitely be aggravating to waste two and a half minutes just to wait on booting up your device when you have a 15 minute break at work or something like that. That can be inconvenience. Also, another thing I'd like to point out is that um of course it doesn't look as flashy as Botasira with all of its beautiful themes and stuff but it's still a little bit more than MuOS has and I like the big tiles and I don't mind the backgrounds it's easy to navigate and get around to find what you're looking for I also enjoy the vertical arcade a lot on the stock OS so that's a big reason as well for me of coming back to stock OS I know that I can imitate that on other operating systems, but I just find it to work great right out of the box on the H and plus model. As you can see here, I'm on the February build from 2024 on the H and that is the latest update for the H model, but there is a newer update for the plus, which removes the numbers from your game catalog. And that's a very much welcome change. I cannot wait for that to be added to the H. So now I'm going to go ahead and head over to my computer. I want to pop my SD card. This is my TF1 card into my computer. And the first thing we'll be looking at will be the update for the plus. And I'll have these links posted for you down below on the plus model. They happen to add a few new features here. And um, I go with the 16 gigabyte version because I don't prefer the ROM set that Ambernick provides and I have my own ROMs. So I always go with the 16 gigabyte. I also notice some people while trying to download the 64 gigabyte need to have a paid account on Mega, which is not cool. Not many of us use Mega enough to pay for an account. So we'll head over here and we'll download these. And as you can see, it downloads pretty quick for me. I do not 
recommend the Rufus that Ambernick provides. So I will share a link to Rufus's website for you to get the newest version because this is an outdated version. Moving over to the H, we have the February build, which does not have all of those new changes that the Plus has right now, but I'm sure they'll be adding it soon enough. Again, I'm going for the 16 gigabyte version because it's just my preference. But if you want the 64 gigabyte, I would also have that link down below. Here, everything from here on out will be the same between the two devices as far as setting it up and getting your ROMs and everything set up. The thing that's nice with Ambernick software is that it comes with all the BIOS that you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and download this now. So they download pretty quick and that's nice. But again, for those in the back of the classroom, I do not recommend downloading the Rufus that Ambernick provides. It is out of date. So we'll head over to the Rufus website. And Rufus is a free program, so you don't have to be concerned with any of that. It's also very small. Scroll down till you get to the download area and select the 4.4 EXE. Close out the advertisement and save it to your folder of choice. Like I said, it's a small program, so it downloads really quick. Now we're gonna head over to Mini Tool Partition Wizard and we're gonna give this a download. After you're done downloading, install the programs, Mini Tool Partition and Rufus, and then open Mini Tool Partition Wizard and find your SD card. The easiest way that I say to find it is to look for the one with the size of the actual SD card you're using. As you can see here, I have a 14.99, which is actually a 16 gigabyte SD card. That's the one that I use for the TF1 slot because I do use a two card setup. You're not obligated to use a two card setup. It's just my preference. I will be showing you how to also set up the one card setup, so don't you worry. Here, I made a small mistake in the format type and made it an NTFS. If you're using a 32 gigabyte card or larger, you need to set it an EX FAT. And if it is 32 gigs or smaller, FAT32. Apply the changes. Allow that to finish what it's doing. When it's done, just hit OK and then close out the program. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna extract the software, the operating system. And I use 7-Zip, which I forgot to mention earlier, but I will link that down below if you want to use the exact same program. It is also free. So I'll head over to show more options. 7-Zip, extract files, and okay. We'll give that a moment to finish extracting. And now that's that that's done, you're going to want to head over to Rufus, wherever you installed that at. You're going to want to click select, open up the operating system that you just downloaded. Up top under where it says device, you want to make sure that that is the SD card that you have. And then hit start. Okay, and just give this some time to finish up. I hyperlapsed it, but it does take a few minutes. It's not as quick as what you're seeing on screen, just so you know. Once this finishes up, we're gonna go ahead and select. We're gonna close this out. And if you get an error, just close it. It's fine. Sometimes you get an error because Windows doesn't like to read certain file formats. So just close out Rufus and then safely eject your SD card. This avoids corrupting your SD card or the files on it. Remove the SD card from your computer. 
and put it back into your device. Make sure you're putting your SD card into the TF1 slot, whether on the Plus or the H model. Your operating system should go into the TF1 slot. Now during this first initial boot, you gotta have patience. It doesn't take as long as custom firmwares do, but it does take a second. While it does that, you can take a sip of some coffee, say hi to your mom, <laughs> whatever. Just give it a second. So it may be a little bit excessive, but what I like to do is once it boots up, I just navigate through the OS. I'll check it out, make sure that the SD card is acting accordingly. And then I grab my secondary SD card and I load that into the TF2 slot. This is a blank secondary SD card. But what I allow for the system to do is to write the BIOS, or actually, since this is stock Ambernick, it's gonna write a save and ROMs folder to the SD card. So I'll just reboot it so that it initializes that card. And once it turns back on, I'll just go into the settings here and I will go into RetroArch. I will just click on TF2. And of course it has no games cause we haven't put any on there yet, but now we can go ahead and shut it down and it should have those folders written to the SD card. What you're gonna do next is if you're using only a one card setup, you're gonna take out your TF1 card and place it into your computer. If you're using a two card setup like I am here, you're gonna pop your TF2 card out and put it into your computer. Once your card has loaded onto your computer, this is what a TF1 card would look like. But for you guys with the TF2 cards, it will only have a ROMs and a saves folder. So you don't have to worry about BIOS because as I'm gonna show here from the TF1 card, all of those are already put onto the card for you by Ambernick. So we don't have to worry about that which is a major plus because with custom firmwares, you have to go and source the BIOS files. And I know that's a bit overwhelming for new users. So now we're going to go into the ROMs folder. And in the ROMs folder, we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose the folder that goes to the system of the games that we want to transfer over. So I have a curated list of ROMs here. And I'm going to go ahead and select Dreamcast and the Dreamcast over on my side of ROMs that I have stored. And I'm going to transfer a few of them over. And this process could take a little bit of time depending on the speeds of your SD cards. So just be mindful of that. I'm going to go ahead and hyperlapse it so that you guys don't have to sit through the boring part, but I'm just transferring ROMs. Close out the folders upon completion and then go ahead down to the bottom of your desktop and safely eject your SD card. Once it's been ejected, go ahead and put it back into your device and power it on. As you can see on my device here, just going through the ROMs list, I'm going to go ahead and select the device or a system in which I have already added ROMs to. And on the H model, you'll see these numbers appended to the title of your games. But on the plus model, on that new update, they actually removed it. It's something that I'm really waiting for on the H and I cannot wait till they do it. But that's about it for those of you who want to just get back to stock or are trying to put the stock OS onto a new SD card. This is everything you need. As far as SD cards, I recommend SanDisk and Samsung. And for those of you who are wanting to get a modified variant of stock, look forward to the next video. Should be coming out within the next couple of days. Thank you so much. This is Too Loud Tech. And remember, you're listening to a friend. Peace.